Hi, my name is Dr. Erica Aragona, and I'm a board certified family medicine physician with a special emphasis on women's health. So I partnered with Fem Health Project because I'm passionate about talking about all the subjects in female health, including vaginal discharge. So we're gonna break down for you today what that means, what's normal and healthy, and what's not. So let's first talk about the healthy types of vaginal discharge. Did you know that every single woman normally has about half teaspoon to one full teaspoon of vaginal discharge every single day? And it's usually clear to light white and usually doesn't have an odor. And this is a good thing, it's natural. It helps your body rid all the bacterial cells or any other particles that are diseases or concerning things and get rid of it to keep you healthy. Here's what you wanna keep in mind. This can change throughout the month as your cycle changes, as your hormones change, or for other things that I'm gonna break down after that. But remember, vaginal discharge is normal and it's healthy. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is ovulation. That usually is a cervical change, right? What we see is the mucus gets thinner. It's clear, but it's thinner. And a lot of times women can actually tell they're ovulating by the change in consistency. Cloudy or white vaginal discharge or leucorrhea often happens before a period. And this is when your body is naturally sloughing off cells and fluid. This is not concerning and it happens to everybody. The next thing that you can look for is a pink color. And usually that means either very light spotting, early signs of period, or you could have any type of irritation. Now that we wanna go into more detail on the abnormal sides. But after sex, you can have slight irritation of the cervical region and some spotting can occur and it's not a concern to see your physician for. Red usually means you're on your period, so we're not concerned there when you're having a normal, healthy period and flow. And then brown often can show the end signs of a period or older blood. But now let's talk about the abnormal colors, okay? And a lot of the time they can overlap. So you wanna talk with your doctor if you have any concerns at all, because it can be confusing. And you also wanna look for other signs and symptoms and not just the vaginal color of that vaginal discharge. All right, so let's talk about the abnormals, okay? White, if it's thick, it can be very, very itchy, is often the signs of a fungal infection or candida. We commonly call it a yeast infection. This can happen a lot of times after you've been on antibiotics because it clears all the good stuff in the vaginal area because we have bacteria in there to keep our vaginal area healthy. But when the antibiotics come on board, they rid the body of all of that and then yeast can overgrow. It's pretty common. It can also happen after douching or again, ridding the body of the other healthy bacteria there. So you wanna avoid douching when possible. And talk with your doctor quickly because there are medications that can treat it. Gray or a thin kind of white color, often accompanied with a fishy smell, is what we call bacterial vaginosis. And what this is, is also an overgrowth of, get this, the most common bacteria normally found in the vagina. It's already there, but it can grow and grow and grow. And when it gets to that level, it can cause irritation. So you wanna talk with your doctor because this is treated with a medication. The next color that we wanna talk about is pink. Remember I said that can be normal, but if you have an early cancer, an early growth, oftentimes you can notice spotting. So you wanna talk with your doctor if it's not a normal pattern for you or there's no explanation for why you would be having this color. Red, we talked about, can be from menstruation, but you know it also can be caused by polyp. What is a polyp? So that's a benign growth. It's non-cancerous, but it can bleed easily, and that can be in the vaginal region or even on your cervix, or sometimes it can be even higher in the uterus, and that can cause bleeding. We also worry about cancer in this case, cancer of the uterus or of the cervix, especially if you're postmenopausal and have any vaginal bleeding, that's an absolute must to talk with your physician for an immediate consultation and workup to make sure everything is okay. And then we also wanna talk about sexually transmitted infections. So these are usually bacteria, such as gonorrhea and chlamydia, or a parasite, and that's called trichomoniasis. And what that can do is cause green, yellow, itchy, usually, but not always, discharge. It can also cause painful urination, and it can even spread, if not treated right away, up into your female pelvic organs and cause something really serious that we call PID. That stands for pelvic inflammatory disease. So we wanna catch these infections really early 
and treat them and also treat your partners to make sure you don't spread the infections back and forth. If it does progress to PID, one, it's super, super painful, but two, if it's left untreated too long, it can cause infertility. So these are some helpful tips. These are some helpful tips to help you know that vaginal discharge is totally healthy and normal, but you wanna look for the other signs and symptoms to know if it's normal for you or something that you need to consult your doctor with further. Thanks so much for watching. Check out femhealthproject.com for more information and don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome information by board certified physicians here to help you.